When I walk into this exhibition and I see the light work and the sculptures interacting with each other, it really triggers all of our senses. You have all these very slow and delicate movements. It makes you more aware of how you interact with space. Somehow it, it stops time. We're very happy to welcome you here in the exhibition of George Ricky, the first exhibition we have with his works in our gallery. Ricky had a very long oeuvre. Uh, there were almost five decades of making sculptures after the period of Ricky's paintings. This exhibition shows works from different uh, decades. We have the work from 1958 behind me, and there's work from 69, 73, and several works of the 80s and 90s. So it really is an overview of the artist's practice. It really shows how the artists reflected on the same elements, the same mechanics for uh, five decades in a row. Because culture is so much about its presence and its weight in space. This generation of sculptors in the 50s have really taken that challenge away from sculpture and sculpture becomes something moving. Sculpture becomes more like a drawing in space. This is really extraordinary avant-garde movement to change that after thousands of years of making static sculpture. One of Ricky's famous quotes is, I think it's important to make art you have to wait for. Ricky is often called one of the most important artists within the movement of the kinetic sculptures. He's often compared to Alexander Kelder, who he met in 1952. And the piece behind me, for example, Bridge from 1958, really shows that not only the influence, but also the way that Ricky tried to go further than the formal language of Kelder. Bridge shows Ricky's departure from Calder's catenary systems and is constructed in a very refined way from various subtly balancing parts. There is no color in the stainless steel except for the red accent at the top. The truncated triangles are directly reminiscent of geometric sculptures. Now the most interesting thing about Ricky's work I think is the dialogue between a delicate formal language and parts that are robust. In the late 1960s and in the early 1970s, he made constructions out of steel wire, with the counterweight being made from the same components. This sculpture is made in 1973. It's one of the very few pieces that he made in gilt steel. It's a unique piece, and I'm particularly touched by this kind of verticality of the line and how all these elements are moving next to it. It has also a very fascinating exhibition history, for example, at the Solomon Guggenheim Museum in New York, but also at the Kestner Gesellschaft in Hanover in Germany, and also at the Snyder Art Museum in Notre Dame. The work here is an interesting piece from 1990. It's called Conversation Mondrian meets Malevich. And both Mondrian and Malevich are artists that Ricky often referred to in his texts. And it's interesting because both artists really went from figurative painting through geometric abstraction by going to the purest form of languages. Ricky is perhaps best known for his blades and sedges, which refer to both his memories of his childhood in Scotland but also to nature with which they enter into dialogue by poetically capturing the sun, the wind and the movement that surrounds us in everyday life. The title of these works varied between rather poetic references to the seasons or landscapes and the directions of the compositions or movements, such as here, four lines in a square variation two from 1969, or two lines horizontal spread from 1984-85. And of course, a highlight of this exhibition is Peristyle two from 1966. One of my favorite George Ricci moments is when you visit the island of Naoshima. You see these arrows waving along in the wind. 
I'm particularly proud that we have a similar work, um, a historic piece that's now showing here at Canal. In a way, it makes us appreciate nature as part of the sculpture, because nature, which of course animates all of us, also animates this sculpture. Every piece is interesting. The more you look at it, the more time you take to really discover it, to really reflect, then it really unveils its secrets.